Okay, so this is the second part of the House T AutoCAD 2020 uh, 3D modeling exercise. And what we're going to do first is try and tip a couple of these objects up off the ground. And we can use them, those then for height referencing. Okay, now we're in a, a drawing called House T 2D Drawings. Okay, so I'd advise you to use that as the base. Uh, you'll find the link in the uh, in the description for the for the videos here. Okay, so I'm going to freeze the three D the two D scans layer so we can see what's going on. And I'm hoping the red is going to come through clearly on the video. It generally will. So if we wanted to if we, to try and rotate this, if we try to rotate it just now. If I grab the items here, pick a base point, all I can do is spin on the ground. Okay, what I want to do is tip this upwards. So what I want to do is rotate around this line as the axis. Okay, and that will leave the heights of the doors, the floors, and the roof, etc. correct. So I can transpose the heights from these across to the model. Okay, but to, to, to rotate around this axis, we need to manipulate this device. Okay? And you do that using the coordinates panel and you decide which of these standard settings would put the Z axis running in this direction. Okay, it's not a quiz here, I'm just going to give you the answer. It would be the front coordinate system. So can you see the cube here? Okay? So if we went for that, if we went for the front coordinate system then the z-axis becomes this line and this is what we rotate around. Okay, so we'll get rotate command, grab the objects, enter, base point can be any of these points because they're all in line with each other along the z-direction. Okay, well this one will be the logical one to pick. Okay, and the angle if ortho wasn't on, you can see it definitely looks like a propeller. Okay, but the angle would be minus 90. So minus 90, enter. Okay, so these heights can then be used once we start modeling up the form over here. Okay, if you get lost in the coordinate system, just go back to the world. That puts you back to what we might call normal. Okay, to get these steps tipped up, I would need to look at a different coordinate system. It's either going to be the left one or the right one. At the moment, I, on the view cube, I can see the word left, so that would be the logical one to pick. So we'll choose the left coordinate system. The Z axis is now running in this direction and I can then rotate these objects. I'm going to take the text as well this time. Base point and once again rotation of minus 90. Okay, can you see now how the orbit operates? These vertical lines always stay vertical. Everything else, the angle of everything else is changing, but anything that's vertical remains vertical. Okay, I'll show you another method of getting an object into position and that's to copy and paste it into position. And we'll do that with the staircase, with this staircase. Okay, but firstly we need to get into the coordinate system that suits the object. Okay, if I go back to world it's not that. Okay, for me to see that stair as if I could read it properly, I need the x-axis to be running along this line. Okay, so we've got to manipulate the axes ourselves. Okay, so the command is UCS, enter. I want to rotate around the z-axis. Okay, so type in z and enter. And this time it's a positive 90. 90 Okay, now what I would do here is type the plan command and enter twice 
and it brings me facing the stair as if I was drawing it correctly, as if it was facing me properly. Okay, let's copy this to the clipboard. In, in AutoCAD, the best way is to use Shift, Control, and C. Shift, Control, C. It's asking for a base point. I'm going to use this end point. And then it's asking me to select the objects. I'm going to take everything there. Enter. That's on my clipboard now. Now that could have been in a completely different drawing. It could have been in a, a separate drawing altogether. Okay. Now I want to place that here. Okay. So which coordinate system suits that? Okay. You can see where the bottom of the staircase is. It's at this side. So if I change to the left coordinate system and do shift control V the stairs facing the wrong way. Escape. Go for the right coordinate system, shift control V, the stairs in the right orientation now. I've got the landing appearing in the right place. So I'm going to paste it onto the model at this location. Okay, we'll come back to that stair in a, in a while. Uh, we're going to deal with something a bit simpler first which is the shape of the walls, the main walls at ground floor. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the world coordinate system and what we'll do is we'll trace over the top of this red shape. Okay, now we'll create a new layer for this and we'll try and be consistent with the layering. You can see things are quite organized here. Um, what I'm going to do is rename this to conch, just so it's, it is consistent. Okay, and create a new layer, 3D, wall, white, and then add the G at the end of it, so it, I know it's the ground floor walls. And this could be handy later on for you know, removing objects out of view if the things are getting a bit chaotic break them down a wee bit. So I know which objects are 3D, I know their walls. The next word is really the, the material in indicator. And this helps later when we go to 3D Studio, we know what material to put on which object. And then the level of the building, G. Okay, so I'll make that current. I want it to be white. And we're ready to go. 3D, WL, white, G. Okay, now this could be traced either in the plan view, plan, enter twice, or it could be traced in the 3D view. So that was shift and middle mouse. Okay, now I'm just going to tip around the other way just so the staircase isn't blocking the objects on the ground. That's a polyline. We're going to use solids first for modeling and therefore we need to use polylines for those. I'm going to start at this point. Okay, Check your object snaps, you don't need very many when you're working in 3D, so just the end point will do. And I'm confident that I can just use end point because the 2D work is good. Okay, I've definitely avoided overlaps and lines stopping short tracing with a polyline and at this point I want to close the shape okay that's more definite than actually picking the point so let us see and enter or click close in the options okay we've got a single closed shape now okay the height of these is to this position here. So I'm just going to mark a little circle there so you can see it clearly. Okay, that's where we're going to take the height to. Okay, we'll use a simple command here, extrude, pick the shape, enter, and then we're looking for the end of that line. 
okay don't worry that this appears to be bigger it's only going to read the Z information from this position click there and the walls are the right height okay if I was in any doubt I could measure okay use the distance command DI enter from endpoint to endpoint I've got 3150 Measure this object from endpoint to endpoint 3150. Okay, so this is the entrance to the building. Okay, we come down some steps and we go through a doorway. Okay, but this isn't reading as a doorway at the moment, it looks just more like the end of a wall. Okay, we need to put this bit of wall higher up above. So we walk under this doorway. The brown lines here, this is a wooden wall, okay, so we're differentiating that from the white walls of the majority of the house. Okay, this time we're going to use a rectangle. Oh, what I forgot to do is just show you that this looks like a solid. Okay, so if I change my shading mode, shaded with edges, you can see we've got a solid here. Let's draw a poor quality shape. Okay, so this is a polyline again, but I'm not closing the shape. I'm just stopping short of the, the end point there. Try and extrude that and see what happens. Oh, we get some kind of gridded object instead. And there's no lid either. You can see this object has a lid. Okay, back to 2D wireframe whenever you're doing any work. Okay, so if you see the gridded type appearance, you'll know there's something wrong with your polyline. Okay, let's lose that. And deal with our doorway now. So it's a rectangle this time. It's going to be a closed shape if you use a rectangle. Draw on top of this. Okay, but what height do I move that up to? Okay, I've actually got the height here. This is the height of a doorway. So we haven't put in any numbers yet, and I try and keep it that way. Try and use the drawings to help create the model instead of typing in numbers because the chances are you'll get those wrong. Okay, so what we what we can do here is move that shape, enter but use this as our guide from bottom of line to top of line so that's put the door at the correct height which is which should be two meters two thousand okay all we need to do then is extrude this rectangle by what's left so we're using the model again So extrude pick the rectangle enter extruding to this height okay now I wouldn't leave these as two separate pieces okay we can join them together using the union command so solid union doesn't matter which one you pick because the both objects are on the same layer it would matter if they were on different layers so pick both objects and enter and we get basically the the overlap is absorbed we don't see any joining geometry there okay so it's polylining extrude and then perhaps using one of the boolean operations here join subtract or intersect so the intersect is the overlap between two shapes there wouldn't be an intersect there they don't they didn't overlap okay the next shape we want to do is to, to form a cutout for the door that's above this half landing okay the position of the door is is correct on plan here so we can draw a rectangle there okay but what height do we move it up to I can see an object here but these aren't 
above each other. The end point here isn't above the end point there. Okay, so I use a trick using a polyline. Okay, so polyline from either here or here and try to draw to this end point. The polyline isn't allowed to drop downwards. So it remains at the same level, but it's indicating exactly the point, the position above this one. If you doubt, if you doubt that, try distance di from endpoint to endpoint, and this is what I would expect to see. Delta means change, so the change in x is nothing, the change in y is nothing but the change in Z is a really nasty number okay? but that's the actual height there that we're interested in. Okay, We can move now this rectangle enter from end point to end point. The white line is exactly on top of the green line. This line's done its work, it can be deleted and we then extrude this doorway to what's left of the height. So extrude, enter, pick a height, point, could be any of these. Even though it looks crazy, it's only going to take the difference in the Z between here and here. Okay, we've got a solid inside a solid at the moment. If I shade that, you'll see. What we want to do is subtract the smaller one from the big one. Better to do that in 2D wireframe view. Okay, subtract from the big shape, enter, pick the small shape, enter. So that's really taken shape now. It's a much more interesting mass, quite sculptural. Okay. Now the, the solid now is is pretty much uneditable unless you're using some booleans. Okay, when you first create a solid, if I just create use a rectangle and extrude it, okay, it still retains some editability. Notice all the different grip positions, even the height is editable. Okay, when I click on this, all those grips are gone. Okay, it's because we've 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 disrupted this solid. If I if I do another solid inside and subtract that, notice all the grips are gone. It's 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 too complex now for it to be uh, as editable as it was originally. We can still do some editing to it. There's lots of other solids commands that you can work with. We can move edges but we have to be much more selective. Okay, so we'll cover some of those in other videos. Okay, so that's our first look at uh, modeling using solids there. It's by far the, the kind of simplest way of creating shapes, but editability-wise, it is very restrictive.